Hi, my name is Ben Brownie from Curious Turtle, and we're going to be taking a quick look through 3D tracking and PFO. Why would I need 3D tracking? Well, a 3D match move would actually generate up a virtual camera so that CG elements can be inserted seamlessly. So typical jobs for this would be inserting 3D props, uh, 3D animations or characters, graphics or titles in 3D space. And of course it will prove invaluable for set extensions, which you can also use for architectural previs and those type of projects. Uh, it would also give us some environmental particle effects such as water or snow. So how is it that we actually use PFHO? The PFHO interface is designed to make this as easy as possible. Moving through from uh, left to right, it takes you through the functions that you actually need. Even from importing the footage, you can choose to use a wizard to ask a couple of questions about the actual camera movement that you're going to be tracing. From there on, we can calculate the lens distortion in your shot uh, to help create a new, a more accurate track. And we can even export out that corrected footage later on in the process. The next button lets us import a mat so that we can concentrate only on tracking the camera movement and not any other movement that's contained within the shot. And then it's time to track your features. So here, what PFO does is it automatically detects uh, suitable points within your footage to try to build up this uh, virtual camera. And as it goes through the footage, it will automatically discard points that are no longer useful and track the confidence that it, uh, that it has within the individual tracks that it's gotten. After it's finished tracking, you can go in and check the individual tracking points for accuracy uh, and using the PFO uh, traffic light system where high confidence is green and down to red where the confidence is low. So we can come in and remove points that are no longer valuable to us. The next stage lets us estimate the focal length and scene orientation that uses the very visual method of matching up a cube two elements within the shot itself. Now, we can always go and change this and adjust this uh, information we get at a later date, but it just speeds up the process. Now, once the tracking features have been solved, we end up with a point cloud that uh, hopefully describes the camera movement here. And it's at this stage where we can adjust the scene orientation again to perfectly match up our footage. By setting the point of origin at this stage, we can minimize some of the work that we have to do later on in the process when we get into our compositing app or our 3D app. We would also use this time to check for accuracy and make sure that the scene is starting to work out um, as we need it to. So the point cloud itself can be seen both in a 2D version and also as a 3D point cloud so we can assess whether our virtual camera actually matches the movement that it would have done in the actual scene itself. Now, if we need specific points or whether we want to improve the accuracy of our track, then we can add new manual tracking features and track these forwards and backwards throughout the scene. Again, this is going to be a great aid at the compositing stage, as well as improving the ultimate quality of the data that we're taking out in the first place. Now, instead of taking out all of the features from the point cloud out into your compositing app, we can come in here and just cull the ones that we don't really need. So this makes the data that we export out far more manageable without affecting the quality of the results at all. Now, we can take our data out to a whole host of uh, compositing and 3D apps, including After Effects, Nuke, Flame, Houdini, Cinema 4D, and Maya. These will import in with our camera data and any of the features that we exported out as well. From then on, it's up to you to decide what you want to do with that data. So for example, we could import some uh, 3D scenery or maybe some in-scene text instead. Now the different applications will present that data in a slightly different way, but the data itself is still going to be the same whichever application you're gonna be working in. Well, I hope that's given you an idea about how straightforward it is to create a 3D match move using PFHO. Now, if you'd like more information, go to pfho.com and you can check out some of the more project-based tutorials that are up on that site at the moment. Thanks for joining me on this lightning tour. I hope you found it useful. My name is Ben Brownlee from Curious Turtle and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks a lot. Bye.